Let's talk about the new record, mm-hmm. One X. Yeah. I love how the record starts off, man. I have not heard a record like this. I've been waiting for this kind of rock record for cool. a long friggin' time. <laughs> awesome. I love how it goes back and forth at the beginning. Nice. The sound goes back yeah, and yeah. forth. <laughs> I mean, tell me about recording this record. I know Barry's, it's his first record with you guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How did that change the process up? Uh, it changed a little bit. I mean, everybody's, you know, we, we, we're the type of band we all uh, sit together and write the songs together. So uh, when, you know, adding another member, it's all, it, there's always another dynamic. So um, it, it changed the process a little bit. We worked with a different producer. So um, it What was, made you switch up the producers? Uh, well, we, we first started working with our original producer, um, and I, I think things just weren't moving along as quickly as we wanted them to move along. So we just wanted to get the record finished, and there was a lot of things going on at that time. So we ended up uh, heading down to L.A. and meeting up with uh, Howard Benson, who produced the record. Oh, okay, cool. And, uh, yeah, he, he did a great job, and, uh, yeah, that's that. No, I'm wondering, does he do the, the acoustic stuff, too? I know there's an acoustic version of Pain that you guys just released. Yeah. I think it's awesome. Thanks, man. Yeah, he did actually uh, have something to do with that. I, I actually went down to uh, L.A., recorded some acoustic guitars, and uh, we put it together. Nice. I love the cover of Wicked Game, found it online. Thanks, man. And I, I, I know you guys scream a lot in the record and stuff, but this, I mean, I was like, wow, he can he can actually sing. Like, holy shit. Right. Since I began playing, um, like I've, I've always played acoustic and, you know, I've always played uh, cover songs and just, you know, I sit with an acoustic guitar and sing. So um, that's just one of the songs I've always played for years. And I, I love that song. I love the video even more. But uh, <laughs> anyway, yeah, I just um, it's a, it's a good song. So I thought I'd break it out for this tour. And he, oh, it's, it's getting played live, too. Uh, yeah, sometimes. I found it on the Strip Music website. Which, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Helena Christensen's actually on the road with us. She yeah. <laughs> comes out and acts out the video. Oh, no. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Yeah, I can imagine. Uh, lyrically, the album, about being alone, and uh, I was reading in a, but like in a group of people, kind of, mm-hmm. being. it's kind of like that road record, as most bands with the second thing. I mean, you're writing on the road. It's kind of, mm-hmm. it's different. Mm-hmm. What was the writing process for you like this time? Um, well, yeah, I mean, we... It, it, the uh, Lyrically, the record is definitely about, you know, um, feeling alone, uh, just while you're surrounded by so many people, you know, being on the road for so long, it takes its toll on you and you're always putting on a show. You're always trying to be somebody that maybe you're not, you know, you're trying to be somebody you're not, uh, that you're not sometimes. Yeah. So <laughs> it's a little bit tough. And, and, uh, the record is, uh, written about that. Yeah. It's about, um, being around so many people and at the same time feeling, uh, kind of isolated and, and alone. Yeah. Well, it must be very weird for you guys. I mean, I know you've been a band for about 10 years, but I mean, you put out that first record, the first single, boom, jumps huge, second mm-hmm. single, huge, third single. It must be, must be one hell of a trip for you guys. Yeah, yeah absolutely, yeah. man. No, it's, it's, I mean, it's awesome to see, you know, your, your art form to be, you know, exposed on that level and have people reacting to it and stuff. But at the same time, I think, uh, you know, it's ironic being on the road, how, like Adam said, you can be around so many people, but really kind of nobody really knows anybody and everyone carries on as if everyone knows everyone. Yeah. And, uh, that can kind of be, you know, I think that tuned us into what a lot of people feel, you know, like ur- the phenomenon of urban isolation, you know, a lot of people can tap into that and, and, uh, just basically, you know, a lot of people f- feel, you know, inches apart on the outside, miles apart on the inside. And I think that's yeah. one of the reasons why so many people uh, can relate to this record It's you know, and it's resonating on the level it is. Definitely. And, I mean, you have songs in the record, too, which are basically the complete opposite, like a song like Never Too Late, even mm-hmm. the, the closer 1X. Right. I mean, completely di- I love 1X. It's so different for you guys. Well, it's cool, man. 1X, actually, you know, the brief story about that song. I mean, we, we had written most of the record before we uh, got down to L.A. to start recording. And we were doing pre-production, and we were working with the producer, Howard, and, uh, you know, working on all the songs. And, and um, we had basically finished, you know, the record, the, the songs for the record. We had them done. And um, we had a couple extra days to kill before we had to start recording. Howard told us to, um, you know, to take those two days and sit together and just try to come up with a song that wasn't, uh, you know, the way the, the way he put it. He said, you know, try to write, write a song that's bigger than you, bigger than you guys, you know. So. That was the song that uh, we wrote, you know, actually after he he, uh, he suggested that, you know. So we wrote that song while we were in L.A. just before we started to record. So. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. It, it is a little bit different just because of the environment we were in and, and, you know, the mindset we were in. Yeah, definitely. Being in L.A., I'm sure, and you guys are probably big system fans, I would think, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you can hear the like the, the melodic kind of harmonies in that tune. Very system-like. Right. Cool, man. Yeah, we're uh, big fans. Conscious decision or kind of just, it just ended no, up that I way? No, I think it just ended up that way. Yeah. And, yeah, I, I, I think we... Um, yeah, we, we've got a lot of respect for um, a lot of different bands, you know, m- melodic uh, styles and harmonies and stuff. So, yeah. Definitely. I ask every band five quick questions, one word answers. Cool. Uh, first one is iPod or CDs? 
iPod. iPod, yeah. Len- but, uh, the, on the road, it's way better. <laughs> yeah, no, I hear you. Lennon or McCartney? Ooh. McCartney. Ooh, Lennon. Ooh. You're dead. <laughs> You're dead. <laughs> <laughs> McCartney for sure. Uh, like, so. Interesting that you say that. I'm just a huge Beatles fan. I've always been a huge Paul McCartney fan. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Have you I seen know. him live? Uh, yeah, I saw, yeah, I saw Paul live. Saw the last tour? I didn't see the last tour, no. Uh, a few years ago, I, oh, I okay. saw Paul, yeah. Nice. Um, Zeppelin or Sabbath? Zeppelin. But both, <laughs> both, man. <laughs> we're, we're uh, yeah. Zeppelin. We get played a lot on the road for you guys? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. We're big fans of both of those bands, man. So, Alcohol or marijuana? Neither. For me? Both. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> we're pretty chill. Cool. Yeah. And one word, three days grace. Honest. Band. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. <laughs>